Hi everybody, this is Bodishan here. Today we're gonna to be looking at Mastamol stoichiometry. So before you do anything looking at a question, you need to make sure that your chemical equation is balanced. If it is not, take a second, balance that equation. We're gonna need the correct mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Um, if you need help learning how to balance equations correctly, I'll link the video below so that you can kind of get some practice with that. So here's our roadmap, and I mentioned the roadmap in my last video, mole to mole stoichiometry. I'll link that video below too. You should really start there before you do moldograms, just so y'all know. Um, but today we are gonna be starting on green and ending on red, just like normal, but we are gonna go from grams to moles. So since we are passing one and then two arrows, that means we have two T's in our bridge. In other words, this is a two-step stoichiometry process. We're gonna go from grams two moles of the same of the same starting compound or element, and then we're gonna end up with moles of the element or compound that we really want. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. Um, first up, we have our chemical equation. So the very first thing we say is, is it balanced or is it not balanced? And you can go ahead and check it out. Two times two is four Fe, and we have four Fe over here, that's good. 2 times 3 is 6 oxygen. We have uh, 3 times 2, that is 6 oxygen. And then we have 3 carbon and 3 carbon. This is a balanced equation. So now we are ready to actually look at our question. How many moles of Fe2O3 would be required to produce 75.8 grams of Fe with, we're assuming there's an excess of carbon. So you always want to go ahead and set up your bridge by looking at that roadmap we know that we're gonna have two T's in our bridge, which means that this is a three-step problem. I'm sorry, a two-step problem. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Start with what you're given. You are given the 75.8 grams. That is our given mass. Now, in order to um, see what comes next, we look at that roadmap, right? The next thing was gonna be changing it to moles. In order to do that, we're gonna need our molar mass ratio. And then the very last thing, we're changing it into our desired moles. So we need that mole to mole ratio that comes from our balanced chemical equation. This is what it looks like. Take your given, the 75.8 grams of iron, and then diagonal down always has to be the same unit so that we can cancel those out. So this is gonna be grams of iron, and we need it to be in a ratio that is equivalent. So it's gonna need to be one mole of iron. So if you look at the periodic table, you'll be able to find that molar mass of iron and it is 55.85 grams. Now we need to do diagonal down the same again as the um, previous unit. So this is moles of iron. This one needs to be moles of iron. This ratio comes from our balanced chemical equation. So here's iron and I have four of them. So we're gonna have four moles of iron and then the upper right hand box is always what the question is asking you for. So the question says, how many moles of Fe2O3? So this is moles of Fe2O3. I'm just gonna go looking for it. It's right here, Fe2O3. And I have two of those. So I can go ahead and I can put two moles of Fe2O3 and that four. And I've already started to cancel out my units. So this grams of Fe can cancel with this grams of Fe because they are at diagonal down. And then the same thing with this moles of Fe can cancel out. So we are only left with moles of Fe2O3, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. Now we can do the math in our calculator. You are gonna multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide your two answers. In other words, I'm doing 75.8 times one times two. I'm getting that answer, which is 151.6. And then I'm gonna multiply the bottom. 55.85 times four, I'm getting that answer right here, 223.4, and then I'm gonna divide these answers. Make sure the top number goes in your calculator first, okay? And you end up getting 0.68 moles of Fe2O3. All right, um, go ahead and try this one start to finish. So you can pause this, and then we'll go over the answer in just a second. All right, so let's check it out. This is the same chemical equation, so we already know it's balanced. We don't have to worry about um, balancing it. It's already good to go. So it says, how many moles of CO2 would be produced if 275 grams of carbon was reacted with an excess of Fe2O3? 
So we know by our roadmap that we're gonna have two T's in our bridge, in other words, two-step problem. So go ahead and start setting up your bridge. Remember the roadmap, keep that in mind, okay? So we're gonna go from our given mass to our molar mass ratio, to the mole to mole ratio that comes from our balanced chemical equation. So start with what you're given. You are given the 275 grams of carbon. Diagonal down the needs to be grams of carbon. And this is molar mass. So we're going to the periodic table. We're looking up the mass of carbon and it's always gonna be equal to one mole, right? Now we can go ahead and cancel out our units. Grams of carbon, grams of carbon. We're left with just moles. So diagonal down needs to be moles of carbon. This one comes from your balanced chemical equation right here. Here's carbon, it's a three. So three moles of carbon will be at the bottom. The top will be what the question is asking you for. How many moles of CO2? So look at CO2 and we have three. So it's gonna be three moles of CO2. Here we can cancel out the moles of carbon and we are left with moles of CO2, which is perfect. That's what our question's asking us for. So now we're gonna do our math. We're gonna multiply the top and get our number, multiply the bottom, get our number, and then divide each of those. So we do 275 times one times three, and you end up getting 825. Then you're gonna multiply the bottom, 12.01 times three, and you end up getting uh, 36.03. Then divide these, remember top number goes in the calculator first, and you end up getting 22.9 moles of CO2. Okay, go ahead, try this one, and then pause and we'll go over the answer. All right, let's check it out. How many moles of carbon are needed to react with an excess of Fe2O3 to produce 50.8 grams of Fe? So this is still balanced. It's the same equation we've been using, so that's a kind of a time saver, but don't forget to check, okay? And let's go ahead and set up our bridge. Remember our roadmap. So we are gonna go given mass, then molar mass ratio, the mole to mole ratio from our equation. Start with what you know, 50.8 grams of Fe. Diagonal down is gonna be grams of Fe. We're going to the periodic table and we're looking up iron, right? And that's gonna be equivalent to one mole. One mole is always equivalent to the molar mass. So um, Fe on the periodic table is 55.85 grams. We can go ahead and cancel out grams of Fe and we're gonna go diagonal down again is gonna be moles of Fe, right? They have to be identical. This time we're going up to our balanced chemical equation and it is gonna be a four. Now, the upper right-hand corner is always what the question asks you to find. How many moles of carbon? So we look up carbon and carbon is three. So we have three moles of carbon. Now we can go ahead, cancel out those moles of Fe. We're left with moles of carbon, which is absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and do our math. We're gonna multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and then divide. And this is what you get. You get 0 0.68 moles of carbon. You guys, I hope this was so helpful to you. If you need more help with uh, chemistry or any kind of science, go ahead and check out my channel, subscribe, and like to see more. See y'all later. Bye, everybody.